Peace, what's going down? Memory here with another Acid Pro 8 tutorial. For those that are just tuning in, I'm a hip-hop producer and session guitarist who's worked with platinum artists such as Ludacris, Young Jeezy, 50 Cent, Kevin Gates, and more. In my last tutorial, I demonstrated how DJ Payne One and I produced Public Enemy's Hoover music. In this tutorial, I want to go over some of the key features that make Acid Pro one of the easiest and efficient digital audio workstations to use for music production. I hope you enjoy. So here we are in Acid Pro 8, and this is one of my original compositions. And I'm just going to break it down for you so that you can see some of the different features that Acid Pro 8 has. Uh, first, I'll play it for you, though. So that's the track in a nutshell. It may seem complex, but it's fairly simple in terms of the number of elements that are here. You have a sample, some drums, a lot of drums. You have bass, guitar, and some synths. So I'm just gonna go through all of the different pieces and show you how it was created and show you which features and acid I used in order to create it. So the first thing I want to go over is the sample. The sample came from DJ Payne One's Unfinished Friday. Every Friday, DJ Payne One will release a piece of unfinished music, and he'll have other producers create a beat out of it, and then repost it so that he can give feedback to them. By clicking on the track, we get the track properties, and then a series of what are called clips. So there's only one clip here, so we're going to click on that, and that shows us what the original sample is. If we play the original sample, we can hear it. So the first thing I normally do when I get a sample is I want to figure out what the tempo is. And in order to do that, you can use what's called the beat mapper. And so if I go into this stretch tab here, there's this beat mapper wizard. And if I click that, it allows me to detect what the uh, BPM or the tempo of the track is. You just place the downbeat wherever the downbeat is, click next, and it automatically detects what the tempo is. Here it's about 120. What the beat mapper allows us to do is map the track to the grid. So that way everything snaps in place real nicely and then we can loop it as we need to. So in this case, uh, we can see that we have a tempo of roughly 60 BPM. What you can do then is play. So that sounds about right. So then we click next again, and now we can actually stretch uh, the individual counts so that they are beat mapped in time in case any of them are off. So if we press play again. So those are obviously all in time. I've actually done this in a different way. Uh, because I already had the tempo, I'm able to just drag the sample out, and since I know that it's 60, I'm able to just obviously change the tempo here to 60 BPM. But I didn't want uh, the track, the sample, to remain the same as how I got it. So what I did was pitch it up one. And then from there, I just roughly figured out, based on the grid, where each of the downbeats would be and then what the uh, tempo would have to increase to in order to um, make up for that pitch difference. So going through here, I found that 63.5 was pretty close, but it's not perfect. 
So in that case, what I did was I just made slices where it started to get off tempo. And then I just did what's called a crossfade, which makes a smooth transition. Okay, so then I just keep looking for those areas where I think it's going off. And, you know, 63.5 is pretty darn close. So I could dial it in more, um, but, you know, that was enough for, for my purpose. So here was another. So that's pretty much what I did in order to get uh, the tempo to where I wanted it to be. So in terms of slicing the track up, as you can see, I've made these different slices. These are all the points where I've actually sliced the beat and moved it a little bit so that it was on time. This arrow here indicates that I've actually reversed the sample. And by hitting uh, the U key, I'm able to reverse pieces. So, you know, you can do different effects with that. Um, in this case, you can hear it. These lines here indicate that I've done some sort of what's called effects automation. And with different effects, if you click the track effects here, you can see that I've added a what's called a fab filter. The fab filter has been automated so that the frequency and the resonance change. If you watch here, So it's relatively easy to automate different uh, dials that are on your different effects here. There's simply a configure effects automation button and then you have all these options. Now that the sample snaps to the grid, it's relatively easy to go in and paint in your drums. So you simply select your track and you just paint them in where you want them. I've doubled up the kick and quadrupled the snare. And in this case, I've actually pitched one of them up five. You can, you can pitch drums up and down, or any sample for that matter, just by hitting the plus or minus key. There's a lot you can do with pitching, and it's really integral to the whole process of selecting the sounds that you want to use and making sure that they work together. The guitar that I played follows the bass notes of the sample. Let me play that for you. Now, oftentimes I'll use uh, Vandal, which is a really great guitar plugin. In this case, I used Guitar Rig. I use several different effects for my guitars, uh, but Vandal is a good one. Here I created a guitar harmony, and then I had sort of a solo part over that, and then I added some pretty trippy effects to it. And again, you can hear that I did some effects automation. Effects automation is a really useful tool in order to create moments of movement in your piece. The bass was rather simple. I took an 808 and I pasted it in where I wanted it. And then I just pitched it up and down using the plus or minus key. Here's what you have for the bass. For the synths, I used two different synths. Both were massive presets that I downloaded. The first one... And the second one... So there are several different ways that you can add MIDI. 
In this case, I used an Oxygen 49 USB keyboard and I played each of the sounds and then I went back and I edited them how I needed to. For this really fast sounding ARP, what I did was I played it and then by going up to edit and to MIDI processes and filters, you can quantize the sound so that it's in time with the track. Another way to do this is to enable the inline MIDI editor. And so if you right click, you can uh, choose enable inline MIDI editing. And then this allows you to edit right within your track. And you can just stretch these out how you need to in order to see the piano roll. And then come in and edit your track how you need. Because I play the keyboard, I tend to not do it that way. Uh, once I have actually recorded something though, I will click on the track and go to the clip pool. And this will provide me all of the different clips that I've played. And in this case, I only played one clip. So if I click on that, this just brings me to the regular old piano roll. And from here, I can actually go in and just edit my notes if I want. So well, that's pretty much it for the track. I hope this was interesting and I hope that you learned something about acid and try it out for yourself. I hope this tutorial was informative as well as interesting. If you have any questions, check out the Magic's website for details. Please give your feedback and share this video with others on social media. This tutorial was an introduction into some of the features in Acid Pro, including the beat mapper, the MIDI editing tool, and piano roll slicing and reversing of sample features, uh, effects, VSTs, and effects automation. If there's a feature that you would like demonstrated in Acid Pro, let me know and I'll consider it for one of my videos. Stay tuned for more videos like this one. Peace.